Hello to this little bit spontaneous uh, video. I suddenly felt the need to talk about Suomi. Like um, I already announced uh, in the uh, Samurai in Time video where I said that Samurai in Time might possibly be the best comedy of the year. But with one caveat, there's a new Koki Mitani movie coming. And um, yeah, that was another contender for this title. And the movie is called All About Suomi. Or in Japanese, it's Suomi no Hanashi o Shima Sho. So let's talk about Suomi. And that's what we're going to do here. And it's a little bit strange situation because... I watched it yesterday in the cinema. It was uh, really, really full and it seems to be a very big success. But seemingly a lot of people don't like it. And I'm very confused. I read some Japanese reviews and I... What's going on here? Why do you have this opinion? I somehow understand it, but... Maybe you didn't really get the movie, at least not the way I got it. And uh, let's see if we can figure out the more or less big issues here. But let's talk maybe first a little bit about the cast and crew and so on. Um, the director I mentioned, him, Koki Mitani. I haven't seen all that much by him. I think my first one was uh, Hit Me Anyone One More Time, which is a political comedy, which is totally fine. It's good. Um, then I watched another one that's called Airport that was streaming on the Japanese film festival online. And I think it's a, a really good one-shot airport comedy. Very funny, very nice. And I saw Welcome Back, Mr. Donald. I think probably one of the best comedies that I've seen in recent years. And if you don't know that movie, you should definitely watch it. There are some others that are seemingly very, very good, but I haven't watched them yet. And I will sooner or later because I think his stuff is really good and I like this one as much. Um, yeah, the main character called uh, Sumi here is played by Masami Nagasawa. Um, you probably know her from several Godzilla movies like uh, Godzilla Tokyo SOS or maybe Our Little Sister or Shin Ultraman where she became very very big or maybe Shin Kamen Rider or maybe you've heard her voice in Your Name or From Up on Poppy Hill. So she made a lot of stuff. She's probably one of the most popular and successful actresses recently. Like a big mainstream star. And then we have Hidetoshi Nishijima, uh, who was in Shin Ultraman as well. Uh, he was in Akubi too, but probably his most famous role was in uh, Drive My Car, uh, which hopefully everybody has seen. But I want to recommend something that he did that's maybe not that popular. Um, watch all. Um, Kamen Rider Black Sun. It's really, really good. It's on Amazon Prime and uh, was one of my first experiences with Kamen Rider and got me into that franchise. So I uh, give it a try. It's really, really great. Really, really political and uh, really amazing. Then we have uh, Tori Matsuzaka who you might have seen in Shin Kamen Rider or The Blood of Wolves. Or, um, what was it called here, uh, uh, Intolerance, which was really amazing. Or, of course, the sequel to Blood of Wolves, The Last of Wolves, which is a very, very great movie as well. Then we have Koji Seto, probably most famous for his role in Asako 1 and 2. Um, but I really liked the movie um, Love Nonetheless, where he plays a bookshop owner and suddenly a high school girl comes and uh, wants a relationship with him which is really strange and uh, yeah a very good movie by Hideo Jojo 
who I need to watch more, like more of his movies. Then we have uh, one of the stars, one of the big stars of this movie, like not as popular an actor as the others, but um, really, really amazing. Kenichi Endo, everyone who has been watching Japanese for uh, Japanese movies for some time has seen him. Um, of course, he was a uh, nobody knows. Gozu, Violent Cop, uh, The Right Two, uh, Visitor Q. Anyway, a lot of Takashi Mika films, which is where you will most likely have seen him. And uh, amazing actor. Did a lot of low budget stuff, but uh, he's always a pleasure when he's on screen. And here in this movie, he's uh, like one, one of the best things that's happening. We have uh, Takashi Kobayashi who was in Shin Godzilla, like all these Shin movie actors are here. But then he he did some voice acting, for example, for Summer Wars or Wolf Children. And then we have a uh, Bando Yajuro, who, according to Letterboxd, hasn't done many movies, but somehow I knew his face, so I'm pretty sure he's uh, more like a TV guy. Yeah, he does a, quite a lot of TV, but um, nothing I've really watched. But yeah, more, more of a TV actor. And um, can't be... Oh, we have some, some more people, sorry. We have uh, Junki Tozuka, who was in that movie um, We Are, which I didn't like so much. But uh, he did a lot of uh, Kamen Rider stuff. So good, good Kamen Rider actors are always good. We have Kenji Anan, who wasn't in Shin Godzilla, but Godzilla minus one. And he was in those fantastic Mike Hammer movies, like the most terrible time in my life and Trap. And not in the other one, seemingly. That's weird. But uh, there's a great uh, watch, uh, Mike Hammer. He's amazing. We have uh, Zen Kajihara, uh, most famous for uh, The Grudge, um, Gamera 2, Attack of Legion, and The Most Terrible Time of My Life, which you should watch. It's an amazing movie. Um, one of the rare occasions where you can see Masatoshi Nagase, uh, Shinya Tsukamoto, and Joe Shishido in the same movie. And it's great. Uh, last one here with Miyazawa Emma, who hasn't done that much yet, but does a nice job here. Anyway, so, um, yeah, what's this movie about? This woman disappears and um, a detective comes to the house where she lived and talks to her husband. And soon we will know that this detective used to be married to her, so basically her current husband and the ex-husband um, try to figure out what's going on here and it won't be just these two because most male actors in this movie had some kind of uh, relationship with her, obviously not the actors but their roles. Uh, anyway, so at some point we have a house full of guys who are all in love with her and competing who she might have loved the most or who's the most important for her and try to figure out what happened to her and yeah that takes some weird twists and turns it's kind of a mystery uh, movie like the typical um, murder mystery it's kind of a take on this uh, um, Akira Kurosawa movie uh, High and Low and of course it's a comedy movie like Koki Mitani always does. So uh, for me that all works perfectly fine. Like the mystery could be a little bit more mysterious so I felt like it figured it out a little bit too early but here is not the, the big question what happened but more why it happened so that's I feel totally okay um, then people complain that it's all just set in this one house with some 
other scenes around it and that's a really strange um, complaint because it's a like mystery movie like any given murder mystery movie is set in one house and just the story plays out there and Koki Mitani is a guy who comes from the theater so he's used to tell stories in very limited locations so what's the problem here that's no problem it's just people being angry about ridiculous stuff like my mother who watched this movie what was the title I remember the German title um, with Colin Farrell in the phone booth was it just called phone booth I don't know in Germany we called it nicht auflink so don't hang up uh, let's see if Letterboxd can show me. Oh, yeah, it's just called Phone Booth, actually, um, by Joel Schumacher, and, um, which is a German name as well. It should be pro pronounced Schumacher. But uh, anyway, yeah, my mother was really upset that this whole film is set around one phone booth where the people go, oh, that's a pretty clever thing to do. And uh, yeah, it's still exciting. And so I, I don't really remember the movie at the time. I liked it, but... I don't know if it's any good. Anyway, yeah, yeah, people being angry about a limited location is ridiculous, so I don't get that. And then people complain that it's not funny. And I think it's a special kind of humor. It's very slapsticky, it's very stupid, maybe very sure. Um, so maybe a little bit old fashioned for some people, but for, for me, like there's a scene, a party scene, and there's this dude walks around with his uh, glass like this, but the glass is just really, really big, like a fish bowl. And maybe I'm too simple, but for me, that's really funny. <laughs> I see the guy roll. And I, I laugh. It's it's great. The same, this, um, the current husband of Sumi, he's some kind of a writer, and all over his house are pictures of him because he's so like self self obsessed and the first time that's really obvious is when he sits down with um Hidetoshi Nakajima's character and next to them is just a framed picture of him and I, I think you just see like this part of his face or something like that and it's just ridiculous like like stuff like that is, is enough for me to make me laugh so I, I had a good time like whenever something stupid stupid happened or uh, Kennedy Endo wearing weird um, weird uh, uh, wigs and stuff because for some scenes we had a flashback so he needs to look younger and they didn't even try to make his face he look younger he just got a, a wig with long hair and uh, then he was supposed to be much much younger same with um, uh, uh, Masami Nakazawa's um, character who has some scenes as a high school girl and she's just like humongously big and uh, just just like she looks with a school uniform and stuff and that's something that I, I think works pretty well it's stupid it's really really silly stupid humor and for me that, that's good I enjoy this, this stuff so if you don't like slapsticky, uh, slapsticky stuff like that like really, really silly, stupid jokes with big glasses and maybe it's no movie for you. But uh, for me, that's good enough to, to be very, very entertained. Um, and yeah, there were some, some more jokes where people said, that, that's not funny. And okay, then bad for you, good for me, because most of the jokes worked pretty well for me. At the end, there was one longer scene that tried to pay off the whole situation and that didn't work so well for me until a certain point but I will, I will get to that later um, so yeah the humor it's a little bit specific not for everyone but for me so I mean, that's good enough for me and uh, yeah if, if you like silly Japanese slapstick humor this is good and yeah, that's basically all, all people complain about. Like it's not deep enough, the mystery is not clever enough, uh, the humor is 
too bad. And I think it's it's all fine. Yeah, so um in its in the way it's made it all works fine. And after I left the cinema, the um person who joined me was like, well, what was the deeper meaning of that movie? And I, I will get to that later, but first I thought, why why should every movie have a deeper meaning? And then I thought about it, and yes, yes, there's actually a deeper meaning. I just said the first silly, stupid thing that my mind could come up and made it sound as pretentious as possible, but but now I'm, I'm right. That's the, probably the deeper meaning or that meaning that you can see here if you want to um anyway yeah it's it's a really nice movie it looks good it's a film by hideo yamamoto um, who used to be the go-to camera guy for takashi mika and some other amazing directors um they don't go all uh teal and orange which made me so happy um the characters are fun, the dialogues are fun, uh, it's all like good, good comedy. I, I would say if, if we if we must compare it with A Samurai in Time, which uh, I accidentally did in that last video, I would say Samurai in Time is a better movie, but this one is a better comedy because it's actually a comedy that tries to be funny from start to finish and uh, for the most time, for me at least, it succeeded. So yeah, I, I would say this is a better comedy. Samurai Times a better movie. Uh, we haven't talked about the rating. I wanted to say a 4, but the more I think about it, the more I like it. So for, for now, let's go with the 4, but I can imagine if I watch it again, I might go up because uh, I like it even more then. But I usually feel like every review is just work in progress. So yeah, good. Um, so let's get in a little bit uh, deeper into the spoiler zone. So why is this actually a lot of fun and what's the main big point of all of this so the big story is all these ex-husbands suddenly meet at this house like um like i said uh, hide well hidetoshi, Na hidetoshi nishijima is a kind of detective he comes with his um subordinate who uh, helps him uh, trying to figure out what happened and then they meet uh, Kenichi Endo's uh, character who is working there like cleaning the pool and stuff like that and um, it's not known to his boss that he was actually married to his wife and then another character comes who is some kind of a police officer as well or more like a little bit higher like a chief or something and that's one, two, three, four. Then we have the, uh, yeah, like hip YouTuber guy. I, I forgot if he's actually a YouTuber, but uh, yeah, some kind of media stuff, uh, small companies and ooh, big money, green hair, very fancy, cool guy. And uh, yeah, they all discuss like, oh, she liked me more and you don't even understand her. Yeah, you don't know her real self. Like the first discussion they have is the current husband says, oh, she's a great cook. She makes delicious food. And uh, Nishijima is like, no, no, she, she can't cook at all. Like she can't do anything. And there's this lovely flashback where he tries to choose a bathtub and tiles for the wall and stuff. Um, like she has an idea with the rainbow colors and all these fancy things and he's sitting in this bathtub like a like a child uh, playing with his feet and stuff and you know, no we need white something simple you will get tired of rainbows and stuff and soon and you will soon get want to get rid of it and these things and uh, yeah he always knows her as this person who can't do anything like it's 
one point he tries to explain to her how to make some food and she can't even remember what to do after 10 seconds and all this stuff so uh yeah that's what he remembers and you know, I know she's always like doing stuff and uh, cooking and it's delicious and it's really confusing and then the next one shows up and is like yeah you know uh, she can't cook at all and she can't even speak Japanese she speaks only Chinese and so on and so on and we realize they all know a completely different person that was still like the big point um, how they marketed the movie like that's no no big spoiler now but um of course it's very soon and now we get to the big spoilers it's very soon quite obvious that she um kidnapped herself and is now demanding some money to get free again and there's one scene where she's like tied to a chair or yeah and um yeah i i think it's there to suggest that she didn't kidnap herself and that doesn't lead to anything else except that she has some pictures of herself like beaten up and stuff and that is maybe just a, a what is it, a red herring to convince the audience that she didn't kidnap herself but I, I felt like it's really obvious so, so more interesting is later why why did she kidnap herself because um she just wanted money to go to Helsinki which is really really funny um and there was a little bit of a freestyle reshoot because while editing I realized that I didn't talk about the one thing that I didn't like during the and sequence and there's one pretty long scene where Suomi explains her motivation and why she did all the stuff and she's confronting all these men with what happened and basically depending on who she talks to um she changes her character so for example for Kenichi Endo she always does the like or the pigtails or something like that and uh, yells at him and for the guy who believes that she can only speak Chinese she speaks Chinese and uh, makes more like a different hairstyle and stuff like that so she mainly switching her hair and um, changing her behavior according to the situation and I didn't really feel like that's extremely funny or something like that I just felt some point when people started to feel really sorry for Kenichi Endo because she's just screaming at him and uh, then it gets explained yeah, yeah it's fine let's let her do that he enjoys this actually so it's fine so uh, that was the mode when I felt like this joke actually worked but besides that I didn't really like this uh, scene that much it was a little bit yeah I mean it got the main point across like hey you all have no idea who I am um uh, I will just act it out for everyone so it's clear that these personalities are just made up stuff and that's not real um so it kind of did what it was supposed to but I didn't feel like it's as funny as uh, they maybe intended and by the way one thing that many people hated as well uh, we're here doing reshoots I'm not used to do reshoots um is there's a musical number at the end and um, some people said that's the worst musical number ever and I thought it's, it's quite fun like I don't know I didn't mind it it's okay so like got stuck in my ear and uh, didn't come out so soon so I guess it's, it's not that bad it's it's fine anyway people were angry about that and uh, like all the other things that people got angry about this movie I don't get it so uh, back to my past self uh, completing this video no but the main point and that's what I said after the after we left the cinema 
I would say this movie is a really nasty criticism of uh, Japanese society in general and especially Japanese men who just get married to a person who they don't really know and who they don't really care about who they really are as long as they function uh, yeah if they fulfill one function one thing that they like for example Kenichi Endo's character he really likes a tsundere girl so someone who treats him really really badly and gets angry at him all the time so she did that for him and Hidetoshi Naka and uh, Nishijima's character I think most most of the time in the movies they're just numbers like number one two three four and so on so forgive me if I don't remember the names that's another point the movie makes is the guys are completely irrelevant they're just numbers <laughs> yeah and um, he needs someone who can't do anything so he can do it so he can present himself as the cool knowledgeable capable guy which he clearly isn't and so on so they just want someone to fulfill their specific desire their need and they don't really care who that person really is and I guess that's a pretty big point to make and the opposite is she knows the man really really well because to fulfill this need she needs to know them and she explains basically she gets together with them because they love her so she wants to give them love back and uh, at some point she gets tired and runs away so that's her whole motivation and I think that's a pretty big nasty comment on masculinity on Japanese society on uh, dating in Japan probably and I think in a sense that fits this double feature which I already recorded a video on but I have will probably release this here first um, Desert of Namibia and um, Route to Love which both have these couples who are really like separated they have completely separate lives um, there's one scene in Desert of Namibia I won't spoil what it's actually about because this is not a video about Desert of Namibia which is a very good movie and you should watch it but um, like the the main character uh, played by by Yumi Kawai um, who was pretty brilliant in that movie um, she confronts her partner in that scene about a, I'd say a secret from his past and I would say that's something relevant to your partner as well even though that might have happened before the relationship but he's like yeah that has nothing to do with you that's not about you that's my life and they and in that moment they feel completely separated and a route to love is similar you have this couple who live like completely parallel lives and just meet for dinner and that's the motive you can see in so many Japanese movies it's really really scary and most of these movies um, at some point turn to cheating and stuff and ugh, unnecessary things and uh, here it's um, pretty much the same like they have these relationships and nobody really cares about her the man just care about her fulfilling her duty which is basically a, a man just expecting his wife to give birth to his uh, breed if you want to call it that and uh, make dinner and take care of the household and then besides that she's not needed and that's a very depressing thing that happens in reality quite often and uh, yeah nobody really knows their partner and I guess that's the point this movie wants to make and I think it's a pretty big thing for a light comedy about a woman who disappears and her ex-husbands all meeting and uh, being ridiculously comical losers um, 
Yeah, so not that stupid. I think that's pretty good. And yeah, like like I said, I, I left the cinema. I was asked like, oh, what, what's the big point of this? Well, why? I mean, first I think an entertaining movie is a good point to make. But um, yeah, if we get to this, I think it's good. And um, yeah, that's I guess all I can say. Or I would just explain jokes which would not be funny. Um, like I said, I, I like simple jokes like that. I like people with big glasses. And um, if you don't like them, I'm very sorry to tell you this movie might not be for you. But I'm very happy I watched it. I should watch more Koki Mitani. I should watch again um, Welcome Back Mr. McDonald. Also, that's the title. I think that's the title. Which is hilariously funny. It's a movie about a live radio play that goes totally wrong and it's amazing. Yeah, from 97, the good old 90s. Coming back, I heard, after the 80s hype, it's time for the 90s hype. So if you're already in the 90s retro <laughs> movie hype, I, I'm, I'm so worried. Because like, I feel really old if you call... 90s movies classics or retro or something but uh, I guess I guess it's uh, not that strange anyway um, wonderful movie I had a lot of fun like I said not as good a movie as A Samurai in Time but the better comedy and uh, yeah that's all I can say thank you very much for watching um, one more thing recently I noticed the watch the clicks go a little up more people watching uh, thank you that makes me very happy uh, tell your friends about this channel uh, watch more Japanese movies and uh, if you have a chance go to the Nippon Connection where they might play this movie or not I have no idea but they love a good comedy so maybe you can watch it there thank you see you bye